so excited to see all of your faces. Who's excited for what God's going to do today? Yes, I am excited because he is faithful. He is alive. He is here. He is proving his faithfulness. He's proving his consistency. He's proving that it's his heart to come in power, to demonstrate his love in power, in action to set you free of what you need to be set free of, to heal you where there is sickness, where there is pain, to speak to you where the enemy has lied for so long and blinded you. Amen? Amen. To come and baptize you in fire. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Jesus who is here moving in power, and so he is going to move in power today. I know many of you have traveled far. I know there are people from Dallas here. People have come to North Carolina. I'm elated because I know there's hunger here, and the hunger is what pulls on the more of God. There's always more of Him, and so the more that we desire Him, the more we hunger Him, the more we intentionally look in the spiritual realm, like we forget that we are in a park right now, we forget about the number of us here, but our eyes are just on the fact that Jesus is here, the God of miracles is here. And he wants to move in power. Yes, Lord, have your way. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. So, be expectant. Be hungry. Prepare your hearts right now as we worship God. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Prepare your hearts right now to receive from him. Amen. Let's worship him right now.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We praise Amen. you, Jesus. We praise you, Father. Give God a huge praise. We praise you, Father. before every person here be glorified before every person in this park be glorified before every person watching online millions watching be glorified to atheists to believers to every kind of person in this world be glorified jesus in jesus name amen amen, amen. hallelujah Ooh, hallelujah hallelujah god is amazing amen oh he's amazing Oh, I'm so excited to be here with all of you. I'm excited for what God's going to do today. I know he's going to move powerfully. I know many of you have come hungry, and I know that God will be faithful to fill you with what you are desiring, with what you are hungering for. It's his will. It's his desire for you to receive the full inheritance of what he provided for on the cross, which is abundant life in every area by his stripes you are healed he wants you to have complete freedom complete healing no lack in life peace joy this is his will for you and so these things god is going to release to you today if you are in need of it because he's here and he's alive and he's moving in power revival is now and and god will even do exceedingly abundantly beyond what you can even think or dream or ask or imagine or prayer for or pray for rohan right here he shared this amazing testimony it's online if you didn't see it on our social media uh, he shared this amazing testimony last week of the prior week two weeks ago he was baptized in the holy spirit here he'd been desiring and hungering the gift of tongues and to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. He was praying to God for that for a while, didn't know how to receive it. He was hungering for it. God released it to him here. We saw, we were amazed at this encounter that God was having with him. We then witnessed him being delivered. You could see clearly God was delivering him of things right here. He was overcome by the power and presence of God. We then find out the next day he goes for a run and he had pain for 10 years, sciatica, nerve pain in his back for 10 years with no cure. And the pain was completely gone. He shared. Hallelujah. So God did three miracles, let alone just, I mean, the encounter that we witnessed him having. It wasn't like he was just sitting there and these things happened. But there was this, face-to-face, -face, you know, encounter with Jesus that I know surpassed his dreams and he's changed forever. He was sharing with me that he's never been on fire like this before in his life. He will surrender to God now. He does not doubt anymore. Um, this is only the working of God and we praise him. We praise Jesus for what you've done in Rohan's life and I and I know that you, Daryl, was baptized in the Holy Spirit as well and, and Raina, such an amazing, powerful testimony. Many of you probably have witnessed she was set free here. She was set free here of demons who were tormenting her all the time, speaking out of her. I don't want her to preach. I don't want her to preach. I'm trying to mess with her faith, faith, faith and torment her because I do not want her to preach. But God set her free. <laughs> he was victorious over her life. And, and um, she was baptized in the Holy Spirit two days ago, I mean, two weeks ago, I'm sorry, two weeks ago. Do you want to come and share your testimony right now? I feel God w is going to release something powerful, powerful upon, through you as you, as you share what God did. If you can just share what your life was before and then what God did. Um, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Um, uh, I pray that God may uh, let me just share a short testimony about my life. Um, I was um, an alcoholic. I was um, addicted to pills. I couldn't sleep at night. And um, I was raised in a Baptist church all my life when I was younger. And I always felt like I had a constant struggle that I always wanted to come to Christ. And then um, uh, this year, I started come. I seen her on TikTok, and I, something said, I have to go see this young lady because I was living my life 
to my will, not doing what God wanted. I would drink. I would do whatever I wanted. I was very promiscuous, and nothing would make me happy. I would always end up very, very sad. So then when I started um, encountering coming to church here, I started shaking uncontrollably, and then um, the the demons started manifesting themselves to me because I started getting close to God. They can't stand the presence of, of our Jesus. So then um, I would go home, and then um, the demons would shake my bed. They would torment me. They would talk through my nephews. Um, and one thing I'm going to share with you guys is that the demons love to spend our time. Like they, they, they love when a person spends their time not glorifying God or doing God's will. Because I heard them saying, um, the demon would say, they're all unbelievers. God left them one thing and one thing only, the Bible there, the instructions that, you know, we're supposed to live our lives to glorify God because God has a lot of promises to bless our lives. And they would say, and they don't do it. Ha, 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 ha. So they laugh at us, brothers and sisters. And we can't allow that because God gives us um, free will, but we are supposed to come to Christ and ask him, you know, help us guide us father god ever since i came to christ and i gave my life to christ i've never been happier and i've always said this i said to myself if i would have known how happy i was walking with god i would have been gave my life to god a long time ago so just surrender open your heart i i promise you you won't you won't regret it you won't regret it and um i was watching this sermon the other day where th uh, this man this pastor was talking about how he was encountering with a drug addict and that the drug addict was telling him but you don't know how it feels when you get high and that the pastor told him, well, you don't know how it feels like to be in God's presence. Amen. So come to God. He will surrender and he will bless you and you'll be the happiest you've ever been. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you, Jesus. And Raina, Raina, before you leave. So were the demons manifesting? Like, could you hear them before you came here? Was that going on a long time in your life or when did they start? Um, they start. Well, they started after I came here because, um, I I had done something very bad. I had went to, um, I was really shooken by an ex-boyfriend, and I really wanted to get him back. I'm going to be open, humble, and transparent. And I had done witchcraft on my boyfriend, and that's when I opened the door to that demon manifesting. So then they would shake my bed and, and, and just talk to me, you know. They would just um, talk about my family and how they were going to get me and this and that. But they really started um, manifesting themselves after I came here. Because like I said, before I live my life, you don't even know that you're possessed until you come close to God. Because I was living my, my life every day and no manifesting of demons at all. I would live my life, you wouldn't even know, you know, until I started surrendering to God. That's when they started manifesting. If not, I wouldn't have never known, you know. So, you know, they, they're there. It's real. The spiritual realm is so real. And we just need to get close to God because if we don't have God in our lives, we're just um, open for them to come and and. and take over us you know so we we got to stay with God we got to stay close to God because God wants to protect us God wants to guide us God wants to bless us you know so praise praise Jesus I hope that God blesses you all brothers and sisters I love you thank you hallelujah and I just want to bless you right now you were called to be a powerful preacher of God <laughs> And, and we, we, we know this because the demons are, are terrified. The demons can see the gift that you have. The demons know the spiritual realm. They can spot out what gifts God's put in somebody. And they're terrified. So they were terrified of you. Okay, so we, we know this. This is real. And, and, and I'm just hearing this from God. You are going to glorify him so much. You are going to open up so many eyes to the spiritual realm. There's going to be so many people who are in addiction, who are, who are in the, the entertainment the, the sexual industry that you are going to deliver. God's going to deliver them through you. And God wants to put power in you. You know, the power of God that we see here, God wants to put it in his vessels. And not, not just me, you know, it's for, it's for everybody. It's for everybody. And so God's called you to be an anointed, powerful vessel of God. You are powerful when you speak. Did you guys feel power when she spoke? You could feel power even immediately, right now even. Suddenly, you can feel the power of God moving through you as you preach. God is proud of you. He's so proud of you. You know, 20 million people have seen her video of what the, the wonders God did through her life. So he's saying you are changing the world, and this is just the beginning. God is using you to open up eyes. You are a leader in this revival. Thank you, Jesus. I bless you. I bless you. Thank you, Jesus, for this work that you've begun. I speak complete protection.
in Jesus' name. You will preach powerfully the word of God and be used mightily by Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah! How amazing is God? Wow, how amazing is Jesus? Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A couple weeks ago, she was baptized in the Holy Spirit right here, and she began praying in tongues so loudly you could see the passion and fire of God in her, the victory of God in her life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I wanted you to hear that. This was powerful. So the demons were hiding before because the demons can hide when there's no power of God present. We see how when people were people people were in the synagogue and Jesus was, was preaching and the bible says that all of a sudden a demon a demon screamed out of a person ah you are the son of god and so that demon was hiding but when it came into the true presence of Jesus the power of god or anointing, this is what anointing is, is it's the measure of the power of God. So this makes demons tremble. This makes them exposed. They can hide before because nobody really knows what the issue is. You go to the doctor, you go all these places, you're confused. Does God really love me? Why is this happening? You, you know, they hide. They love to hide because they can stay there when they're hidden. But with the power of God, now there's so many people across the world. People have even flown here because they've seen the videos of her being set free. Eyes opening up. Oh, this is what's wrong. It's a spiritual issue. It's a spiritual root. And there's an answer. God does love me and want to set me free because if he did it for her, he can do it for me too. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you were going to do today. I know you're, he's going to touch you all powerfully today. I want to share a word with you now that's going to set you free. That's, God has this appointed time for your eyes to be opened up to his love like never before. And for you to really have an encounter with Jesus. I know a lot of you have not had an actual encounter with Jesus. You've just heard of Jesus. You've just believed in him. But maybe for so long, he's just kind of seemed far away, like far away in heaven, but not real close, not this knowing. But today, God is going to become very real to you. This is what God is up to today. This is what, why he's brought you here today. He wants, he wants to demonstrate his love to you like never before. So the first step for this to happen is that he is going to set many of you free of religion. Yeah. He's going to set many of you free of religion. So what do I mean by that? Many people, when they hear religion, oh, you're religious. Oh, you believe in God. You believe in Jesus. Oh, you're religious. Um, many people think that religion just means like a certain belief, Christian, uh, uh uh, um, Buddhist, hi Hindu, okay, that's, that's your religion. But um, we as believers don't see it that way. <laughs> we see that there's only one way. It's not a religion, but there's one way, and it's to have a relationship with Jesus. He's the only Lord. He's our Savior. That's the only true belief. That's the only way. We, we don't compare to the other beliefs. There's only one way. So we are not a religion, and um, religion is not a word that Jesus really prefers us to identify with because many people see Jesus and Christianity the wrong way. They see they, Jesus has been represented to, to people the wrong way through the lens of religion. I'm going to call it spirit of religion, and this is what this is what I mean when I say that. So in Galatians 3.10, uh, it says, For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. As it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who, who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says the person who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. So he became the curse that was upon us, upon humanity, 
by going on the cross. He became the curse that was upon us, removing the curse off of us. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So before Jesus came, there was a curse on humanity, and that this was a curse of religion. When I say religion, I mean this. You have to follow all of the rules in the law, all of the rules in the law that was given to Moses. There are 600. If you don't fulfill them all, if you don't do them all perfectly, you've messed up. You are not righteous. You are cursed. There is no way we were sinners, so there's no way we could fulfill every single one of those laws. So before Jesus came, every person was under a curse. Every person was under condemnation. Every person was living their lives trying to do works, and they were always falling short. Trying to do works, it was about what they did, and they could never do enough. So it was this heavy life of condemnation, of guilt, of shame, of never being able to know the love of God, not being able to see the love of God clearly, knowing nothing about grace and mercy, not knowing the heart of compassion that God has for them. Now, God has never changed. It feels like in the Old Testament, God was, was wrathful and mean, and then he became nice with Jesus. But God has never changed. Amen? It's just that he, he sent Jesus so now he could, the curse could be removed. Because this, in the spiritual realm, there's all these principles and laws that, we, that, 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 that have to be followed. There's principles, like Raina, sh Raina shared that she dabbled in witchcraft. Now, this is a spiritual principle that even though God loves her so much, and even though we're not perfect, when you do something like that, you're opening up a door in the spiritual realm for, for the enemy to have access to you now. And so now there's torment. Now there's chains. Now now the only way you can be set free is by the power of God to set you free. Okay, so there's, God goes by his order. So when Adam and Eve messed up, there was, I mean, it was how things were. There had to be this curse, and then God had to send Jesus to become the curse for us. Amen. Hallelujah. So now, when Jesus came, we are under a new covenant, no longer the old covenant, a new covenant. So the old has gone away. Now we don't need to fulfill all of these laws. Now, as this word says, we are no longer under condemnation. But now it's about our, our faith in Jesus and just following him, being one with him with his spirit and following him, surrendering to him and following him. We are righteous by faith. That's it. Now we are righteous. We are clean. We are pure. We are holy. It's not about what we do anymore. And there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Before there was constantly but now there is none. God never, never condemns you. Never. So therefore, he never wants you to have condemnation. He never wants you to feel condemnation. He never wants you to feel guilt or shame. When you mess up, he still does not want you to feel guilt and condemnation and shame. Rather, he wants you to genuinely feel sorry and see rightly how he is towards you. He is not like this, I'm angry and upset with you, you messed up. But instead, his arms are wide open like the, 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 the father of the prodigal son, welcoming you back home, saying, I know you messed up, it's okay, come here. This is the way for me to help you to not do it again, is for you to see me rightly, run to my arms, receive my love, so that you can live by the Spirit. This is how God wants it to be. 
when you accept that condemnation, guilt, shame, it makes you be like Adam and Eve and turn away from God. It makes you see God in the wrong lens that he's upset, that he's judging you, that he's disappointed. And that does not make you want to run to him. But running to him is where you access the power to repent. This is the only way you can access the power to repent is his love for you, seeing accurately his amazing love for you. That's the only way you can repent. You cannot repent by, I feel so bad. I feel so bad. I'm turning from God now. All right, I got to do better. I got to try to do I got to read more of the Bible now, fast more now. You see how right now this is living in the law? All of a sudden, you've just switched into the law. You've just switched to the old covenant. Many of you do this. Many of you do this. You feel condemnation. Go, oh. You're not just running to Jesus, and you're not seeing his eyes full of love. You're seeing him wrongly. You're seeing him mad. Like he's like, go take a time out. I don't want to see you right now. That's not the heart of Jesus. That's not the heart of God. Amen? Hallelujah. So religion, when I say spirit of religion, this is what I mean. It's about what you do. And that can never be enough. But the true gospel, Jesus made it. It's about what he does. It's about what he has done for you. It's about his love. It's about the revelation of his love. So, before to be righteous, to be a good, godly person, you're going to try to follow all these rules on your own, your own effort. But now, it's about having a revelation of God's love for you and that giving you the supernatural power to follow him. When you see him rightly, that's what makes his power to flow to you and takes away the, the desires and the temptations of this world. It gives you the desire to, to live how, how it pleases him, to follow him. It's all about what he does. It's all about receiving his love, his power in us. So we can just follow and obey. We, just follow, we receive this love and power, and now we have everything we need to follow and obey. And live completely by the Spirit. That's how it's supposed to be for you. This is how Jesus wants it for you. This is how Jesus wants it to be for you. So we see Jesus. When Jesus comes, he introduces himself. And he introduces himself. He demonstrates his love in power. There was a woman at the well. And she had so much shame. She had multiple husbands, lived with different men. People looked down upon her. She was like filth in those days, seen as filth in those days. But Jesus comes to her with so much love. And he speaks prophetically to her. I know. I know about all the men. I know. But as we read the word, we can read it with revelation. Um, based on how, we, how her response is after, we read with revelation the heart behind his prophetic word. You know, how he delivered the prophetic word. You know, we can, have, we can read it with this revelation, with the, with the true revelation, that, he, that she did not receive judgment through that. But she, she could see, wow, he sees all this about me, and he doesn't judge me, but he loves me. What kind of love is this? <gasps> And it made her just transformed in a moment and full of joy and peace so much that she, she ran and told thousands of people about, she ran and told so many people about Jesus in their hometown. And it says that many of them came to Jesus and believed in him because of that woman's testimony. So we see this woman became used so powerfully by God, so powerfully. And this is when Jesus says that the harvest, this is the beginning of the harvest. God used this woman to bring in the first harvest. Wow. So how was she able to be used so powerfully by God? How was this woman who came straight from sinning so much, boom, immediately used so powerfully by God? It was by her encountering 
his love in action, in power. It was her really meeting Jesus face to face. It's like Raina here. She's we used so powerfully. You heard about the life she was not too long ago in. But God set her free now here. And now she's being used powerfully by God right now, preaching. Hallelujah. But why? It's because she really had a face-to-face encounter with Jesus who came in love and power and set her free from demons, just like Mary Magdalene was set free from many demons by Jesus and became a close disciple to Jesus. So Jesus comes and he, he, he releases prophetic words and people all of a sudden know, wow, Jesus loves me. This is amazing love. We see him heal people, set people free. They didn't have to do anything. They were in sinful lives and he comes and boom, heals, boom, delivers. This is my love for you. They were having these face-to-face encounters with Jesus. They were really knowing his love. Not just believing, yes, God is good and he loves, yeah. They knew because Jesus demonstrated in action. They had a real encounter with him. And then in the Bible, it says they all follow him. The disciples left everything. Boom, left everything, follow him. Left their jobs, left their spouses, boom. Their wives, boom. Left everything, boom. Do you know what's interesting? When you read in the Bible about the disciples following him, they they don't seem to struggle too much. Wow. What was their trick? Why do we have such a hard time today? Because they truly had an encounter with Jesus. Because they truly had an encounter with Jesus where they had real revelation of his personal intimate love for them. They were intoxicated with Jesus. They had fallen in love with him. His love is so powerful that when you can really see his love for you, oh, nothing else stands a chance in this world. You're intoxicated with him. Surrender isn't hard. Because you've really seen his love. His love is so much more amazing than, than, than many of you realize. His personal love for you. Oh, it is so much bigger than most of you realize. And you want to know why. Why? Because of the spirit of religion that has been so big. It's been a scheme of the devil. The devil loves the spirit of religion. Oh, how he loves this. He loves the spirit. He loves to blind people with the spirit of religion. Because then believers do not really know God's love for them. It's like they became back in the old covenant. And they live in the old covenant. So not only do they not know the love of Jesus, but they're not able to access the full inheritance that Jesus provided for them on the cross. And they're not able to be used powerfully by God. They're not able to surrender. Of course the enemy loves the spirit of religion. Right? Second Corinthians um, 3, 5. So, so Jesus came and demonstrated his love. Right? And the disciples were close with him. And because they really knew him deep, they knew his amazing love. The, the first apostles, they were able to represent Jesus perfectly. Right? Amen? They were able to represent Jesus so well. Through their preaching, through the demonstration of the power of God, they were able to be perfect representatives of Jesus. So Jesus flowed perfectly through people. So people could really know the love that Jesus has for them. And then be used powerfully by God. Amen? So um, in, 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 in 2 Corinthians 3, 5, it says, in verse 6, that Jesus has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, not of the letter, meaning the law of the old covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit for the letter kills 
but the spirit gives life. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Meaning, what does that mean? So when you read the Bible without true revelation from the Holy Spirit, the Bible kills. Wow, that sounds, that sounds bold, but it's true. The letter, they're talking about the Bible, the letter, the law. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Even the New Testament could kill when you're not reading it with the true revelation of the Holy Spirit, with the true heart of God. People come with religious spirits all the time, like women can't preach, for example. They take a, a, the piece of scripture and they don't have the heart of God as they read it. They don't have humility and childlikeness, right? When we read scripture like this, we have to look at the context. For those of you that don't know, in that time, women were behaving a certain way. They were competing with men not being humble, uh, zealous about their spiritual gifts, but not being hum humble about it. They were being loud and disruptive. So they were not being wise, and they were causing distraction in the church. So Paul says a prophetic word, women, sit down, be quiet, ask your husbands at home. Because it was using wisdom, prophetic wisdom in that moment. If there was a certain group of people here right now, a certain group of you, that were being disruptive and wild, then I would say to you, sit down and be quiet so these people can hear the word of God. Amen. But I don't mean for every, if these per people looked a certain way, if they were all men, if they were all women, I, I wasn't saying that for every person, right? Okay, so this is the meaning of scripture, but this is what I mean. So even in the New Testament, the letter can kill. I mean, for example, there's so many um, people who say women should not preach or women should not be pastors. Hey, that's killing to preach that. There's people like me who have not had revelation and, and have been convicted and I know that I know that I know what God has called me to, there's women out there that are so discouraged. They feel this calling to be used by God, but all of these high-ranking preachers or something, you know, tell them, you can't preach, that's against God, that's demonic. And that's killing. That's killing God's work. I mean, women are, are like 50% of the population, so you're killing half of God's work. Woo, that's a big deal. Right? So this is what it means. The letter, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The word of God. When we can read the word of God properly, we can have, this is how we hear God's voice. This is how we understand his character. This is how we become more like him. His word gives life. His word is everything. But we need the Holy Spirit to really give us his revelation, his heart. To know, to know what he means when he speaks. To know, oh, this is what you mean. This is your heart. You're not judging. You're loving. You're fully, full of compassion, full of grace, full of mercy. Amen. So verse, verse uh, 9, 2 Corinthians verse 9. If the ministry that brought condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that bring, brings righteousness? So this is speaking right now, the ministry of the Old Covenant. There was a ministry. The people of God in the Old Covenant had a ministry, but their ministry brought condemnation. That's what the Bible says here. So they're saying, how much more glorious is this ministry that instead of bringing condemnation, brings righteousness? Like this ministry here, you are the righteousness of God. You are pure, made new in Christ. You are pure. You are holy. God has made you this way. You are one with Christ. Jesus lives inside of you. He's proud of you. You are a powerful vessel of God. This is the ministry of righteousness. This is the ministry of the new covenant. Not the ministry of condemnation that says, have you read your Bible enough? Have you fasted enough? Have you prayed enough? Have you done enough works? That's the, that's the ministry of, of, of condemnation. Verse 12, therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. 
We are not like Moses who would put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away, but their minds were made dull. For to this day, the same, for to this day, listen up, for to this day, the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever, but this is powerful, listen to this. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom from the law, freedom from the works. And, and we all, we all here who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. This is how we are transformed, is by seeing God with an unveiled face. Seeing God rightly, clearly. Seeing his love for you, clearly, vividly, knowing it. Not a veil like, I know God's love, but I think he's judging me and condemning me because I'm bad. Because I have these thoughts. Because people spoke these words to me. So I don't know, I'm confused. I mean, I guess God loves me, but I don't know. Right? That's like what a veil, that's what a veil is. Many people have veils. Many people have veils of religion. Many people, just like it says, to this day, a veil still covers them when they hear the word of God. So people hear the word of God and they hear it with condemnation. To this day. It says, the Passion Translation, it says, verse 14, the veil has not been lifted from them, for it is only eliminated when one is joined to the Messiah. So until now, whenever the Old Testament is being read, the same blinding comes over their hearts. But the moment one turns to the Lord with an open heart, the veil is lifted and they see. Now the Lord I'm referring to is the Holy Spirit. And wherever he is, there is freedom. So then, 2 Corinthians 11.4, Paul shares, Paul, Paul, Paul now is talking to his disciples. Okay, so he would preach to people. He would preach the gospel, the true gospel of Jesus. And now he's, he's like uh, 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 correcting them, rebuking them, lovingly rebuking them. 2 Corinthians 11.4, for you seem to gladly tolerate anyone who comes to you preaching a pseudo-Jesus. Not the Jesus we have preached. You have accepted a spirit and gospel that is false rather than the spirit and gospel you once embraced. So this reveals to us pseudo Jesus, meaning like a fake Jesus, a wrong Jesus, a Jesus that doesn't exist, a different kind of Jesus, misrepresenting Jesus. So Paul reveals to us that in the Acts church, there was this spiritual battle going on where he would, demonst- he would demonstrate who Jesus really is through his preaching, through the demonstration of power. And people would have encounters with Jesus. They would see Jesus' love for them. But then they would go and they would hear different preachings of Jesus. But the preachings carried a different gospel. They were a different gospel, he said. Meaning, the people preaching carried a spirit of religion. So it confused people. I thought God loved me, but I'm hearing here. I'd, and now after going to that message, I feel like I'm not, I'm not fasting enough. I'm not praying enough. There's so many things I'm not doing good right now. And that's different than conviction, amen? Because it's so important and good to, to read the Bible and to pray. And to fast when God calls you to. But so many people have heard the gospel through the lens of religion. The person preaching, for example, never really met Jesus face to face, encountered the love of God. And therefore, you know, they genuinely love God, but they're preaching religion. You need to fast more. You know, and, and, and they think they're doing right and stuff, but when you're preaching like that, 
it's, have, it's keeping that veil over you. And you're not knowing the love of Jesus. Really. Because this, this is how God wants it to be. You know, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4, it, it, Paul says, My message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, using clever rhetoric, but they were delivered in demonstration of the Holy Spirit operating through me and of his power stirring the minds of the listeners and persuading them so that your faith would not rest on wisdom and rhetoric of men, but on the power of God. So this was Paul's heart. This was his obedience to God. His job was to really know Jesus well, really know Jesus' heart. And now when he preached to people, he's preaching not with religion, but he's preaching with the heart of Jesus. This is God's heart for the people. And this is the way the enemy is trying to, to deceive people and trying to and bring people down, make them feel bad about themselves. I'm coming preaching with this heart of Jesus to them today. I have, heart, I have God's heart. I really know his heart. I'm releasing it to the people today. My preaching is coming with this, with really God's heart because I really encountered God. I really know his heart well. So my preaching is coming with power. God's working through me. Number one. Number two, I don't end with preaching but I demonstrate the power of God because Paul's like, I don't want people to just take my word for it that God loves them. I don't want them to just believe that God loves them. I want them to know that God loves them. I want them to have their own personal encounter with Jesus, them together. So how it works, Jesus chooses to use vessels, work through people to release his power. So you want to have an encounter with God, an encounter with the power of God? you got to come where the power of God is, flowing through vessels, so someone like Apostle Paul can release, demonstrate the power of God. Like what we saw here recently with the baptisms of the Holy Spirit. Just put my hand on them, I baptize you in the Holy Spirit. That's it. And then God took over. Rohan was laying, rolling, laying on the ground, weeping. Raina here was crying out so loud. Everybody gave, they were all giving gifts of tongues. Daryl, too. Others here, too. Given gift of, you could see they were each having their personal encounter with God. There was another here who started weeping. Oh, I'm just weeping so much. We have the video online. I hope you've seen it but you can watch it after. But you can see they're having their own encounters with Jesus. They're really meeting him. They're really seeing his love for them. They are having revelation. Jesus loves me so much. Me, me, he loves me. Yeah, I know he loves everybody, but ah, he loves me so much. And this is what the power of God does. It's like when the power of God can be released and you have this encounter with Jesus, it's like Jesus comes and pierces through all the wrong doctrines of religion, all of the voices in your head, condemnation, guilt, shame, you're not good enough, all of that, all of those wrong preachings of religion that come to you your whole life. He pierces through that all. And it looks different. You might not see his you might not see him physically at all. You probably won't see most of the time you don't see him physically at all. Most of the time you don't hear an audible voice. But the way he comes and touches you, it might as well you're seeing him face to face, his piercing eyes of love looking at you, where you're just intoxicated. It might as well be his arms are tied around you and you feel this hug like you've never felt before. It's this knowing Jesus loves me. Jesus, you are amazing. Jesus, you are all powerful. Oh, Jesus, this is you. This is your love. Wow. All of this revelation happens in just one encounter with 
God with his, with his power, re- power released. It comes different ways. It's come to many of you watching online, many testimonies online. People baptized in the Holy Spirit while they're watching online, laying back on the ground because the power of God is so strong. People saying they feel something touching their hands. They're feeling God touching their hands. People saying they feel the glory of God in them, feeling heavy. People feel depression and anxiety lifted off. All of a sudden, all of these are encounters with the power of God. They give you this revelation of his intimate personal love for you. Hallelujah. Ah, so this is, this is the importance of the power of God. The importance of the power of God. It changed everything for me. I was a lukewarm believer my whole life. I loved God dearly my whole life. And I longed and yearned to be surrendered to him, to be on fire for him. But I, I, was, I was not. I had not encountered the power of God yet. I was doing things in the world. I was partying. I was not surrendered. But one day, out of my hunger for God, for more of him, I went to a little house church. I encountered the power of God for the first time. I saw people being healed, demons cast out of people, and a prophetic word was released to me that touched my heart so deeply. And then I was baptized in the Holy Spirit one month later and began speaking in tongues. And all of those encounters, even just even just witnessing demons being cast out, I mean... Just one of those counters alone changed my life completely and opened up my eyes to God's love for me, intimately me. I mean, just seeing demons being um, cast out of somebody gave me revelation of God's love for me. Like to see, like even when we witness with Reina, you can see like how the devil hates people so much, hates us. And how demons, the, the, the devil is serious about his kingdom. The demons are hard at work. Like just that revelation alone helps you to understand that God is really on your side. And that maybe these thoughts of condemnation and guilt and shame you feel, maybe they aren't truth. Maybe they aren't God. Perhaps they are the devil. By perhaps they are. I mean they are. They are the devil. But this is what the power of God does. This is what the encounter of the power of God does. It opens up your eyes to his love for you. And so that encounter with the encounter with the power of God, this simple encounter with the power of God, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I immediately surrendered. That moment I just shared with you what it's like when you encounter the power of God. You know, I didn't see Jesus. I didn't see his face. I didn't hear an audible voice. But just that encounter just that unique encounter that I had with him when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, it was like I, I might as well see him visibly. I might as well heard his out of a voice. It was, I mean, his love became so real to me. His almightiness became so real to me. My tininess, insignificantness compared to him became so real. And I was like, I surrender to you, God. You are amazing. Wow, you love me so much more than I realized. And then from that day I was on fire, like, God loves me. God, you're amazing. God, you're amazing. God, you're amazing. God loves me. You're amazing, God. You're amazing. Like, I was on fire so much from that one encounter, and I never looked back. Nothing changed. The fire only increased. The surrender only increased. So, you know, many of you, have felt bad about yourself as a Christian. You've compared yourself to other people. You felt like you're not as good as other people. You're not doing enough. You're not doing enough of the right things. Or you won't be a powerful vessel of God because you don't have a good enough heart. And I used to be there. Like, I used to hear, I used to see preachers and, and, and feel condemnation on myself. Like, they're so much better than me. Wow. They're so much more disciplined than me. I mean, they're reading their Bible so much more than me and praying so much and and fasting. And they're so much better than me. I'm not good. You know, I would feel that way. But looking back, I can see that I had the veil of religion over me where I thought it was about our works. 
but God set me free from the blinders of religion. I'm here today because I've been set free from religion. Hallelujah. This is the truth. Um, you know, I used to hear, I used to hear like big preach, big famous preachers, and they would preach like, "I've surrendered everything, and and oh, I've worked so hard, and I've, I don't, I don't know, just like." The way it came across to me, it felt like I could never match up to them. Do you know what I mean? It felt unattainable. It felt like, wow, they're so much better of a Christian than me, and I'm just not going to ever match up to that. That's too bad. It made me feel bad about myself. Do you know what I mean? But (laughs) I'm here today. Like, I'm surrendered to God today. And I'm able to be used powerfully by God for his glory. Hallelujah. I'm able to be here today because of one thing. Because of what God has done for me. Because of God opening up my eyes to his love. Him opening up my eyes gave me the desire to surrender. Him opening up my eyes to his love gave me the desire to not party anymore and do things of the world, but to only serve him. All of a sudden, the things of the spirit became so much more exciting and fun and beautiful to me and fulfilling. But it wasn't because I was like, yeah, I was such a good Christian. I'm not dabbling anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I'm telling you right now, it's what Jesus did. Yeah, I'm so disciplined. That's why I'm here. Yeah, I've fasted so much. I prayed so much to be here. I've read the Bible front and back tons of times. That's why I'm here right now. That's why God's using me. No, no. It's only because of what God has done for me. He has given me the desire to please him. He has given me the desire to obey him. He has given me the desire to be bold for him. He has given me the desire to stand strong against persecution. It's all him. It's all him opening up my eyes to his love for me. It's all him. It's all him who's removed the blinders of religion off of me. Yes, I had to surrender. Yes, I've worked so hard. Yes, I've sacrificed a lot. So much. But Jesus has given me the ability to do all of this. It's not about me being so awesome. It's Jesus. It's all Jesus. It's all Jesus. I feel just like I've been graced to have these precious encounters with him where he's really opened up my eyes. It's him. And God wants this for you now. You can be used powerfully by God. You can surrender to God. You can be used in power by him. You can be pleasing him every day, never never, never not pleasing him. You can be touching his heart every single moment. You can do this. Just, 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 just by one thing, by opening up your heart to receive his love. Opening up your heart to receive his love. Like coming here with an open heart. God, really open my eyes. Really take that veil away. Do what you want. Not just one of the veils. Take all, a million of them if there are. I surrender. I open my heart for you to show me your love for me. Step one. Step two. Value, value this love. 
Treasure this love. Treasure this love. Value your encounters with God. Because these, these encounters that have changed my life, I don't have them every single day. Whoa! You know? Baptize in the Holy Spirit again and again and again. No. But one is all that's needed. <laughs> one is all that's needed. One is all. I just keep going. I keep remembering. Remember how God showed me his love for me? And now, and now I, I go to the word and I can read it the right way. Right? No more condemnation and guilt and shame because that's not God's heart. I met Jesus. That's not who he is. So this is what he means by this scripture. And if this person says this thing to me that's mean, condemnation, guilt, maybe they're even a believer. I don't so quickly receive it. Oh, God's mad at me and I'm a bad person. No, I met Jesus. I know his love for me. I know his truth. I know what he thinks about me. I know how he sees me. So that's not truth. We're in a spiritual war. I see what's going on here. I know Jesus' love for me. And, and then you can really walk with Jesus. Every day you can walk with him. You can walk with him as a friend. That's how God wants it to be. He wants you to be friends with him. Like first, he really wants to know you as a friend. Not, this is someone who, God is judging me on my Christian behaviors. No. Is that how you treat your friend? Oh, I didn't spend enough time in the word. It's not about a book. It's about the person of Jesus. Your best friend. He's your best friend. He loves you so much. He's the most fun person to hang out with. That's how he wants to see you. He needs you to know this truth before, before he even preaches to you, read the Bible. He needs to get this truth into you first. He needs the, the blinders of religion to go away from you first. He wants you to see him rightly, so you're running to spend time with him. This is how he wants it to be. You have an encounter with him. You have an encounter with him here. You see his love, and now you're like, I can't wait to read the Bible. I can't wait to talk to God. Like wherever I'm at, in the car, in the shower, it's a relationship. Now, okay, I've got to spend time with God from this time to this time, and I've checked off my list. It's good to take intention. It's good to make discipline so you don't forget to spend time with him. But before that, God just wants to get you the place. Before you, before you even are like, okay, I'm going to read the Bible every day. God wants you to be like, Come spend time with me. Read one verse. Just one verse even. And talk to me throughout your days. He wants you there. And then from there, his love revealed to you gives you desire to live by the Spirit. Desire to read more of the word. Desire to spend more time with him. He's got to get you here first. He's got to open up your eyes here first. And then it is, not, it is not hard to live completely by the Spirit. I feel like I'm here today, like I'm able to be surrendered to God and be used by him. Because it's like, if you fall in love with someone and you marry them, you've made this covenant with them, and it's the most amazing love you've ever received in your life. I mean, out of this world out of this world, beyond any person you can imagine's love for you. And they've given you the entire world, the entire world. It's not that hard to say thank you, right? I mean, you want to say thank you when someone's giving you the world. So that's how I feel about God. Like, he's giving me the world. So to just obey is easy. <laughs> when you can really see his love right, it's easy. Because it's just like a little thank you. It's like a tiny thank you compared to what he's done for you. Amen? I remove those lies of religion saying that you'll never be good enough. 
that you'll never be a good enough Christian. I remove those lies for you. I'm saying it's possible and it's not hard. If you can just know God's love for you, it's not hard. You want to. You want to. It fills you with peace and joy more than anything to follow Jesus. To say a little thank you for what he's done for you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as I close here, I want to remove specific lies of the enemy that's been over a lot of you. God is going to remove these right now. Um, so one of them, one of them, you know, as believers, is you are, some of you maybe are, 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 are sinning in some area. Maybe it's an addiction, doing things of the world. And um, for some of you, there is a real... Uh, demonic chain that needs to be broken off. You know, there's certain things such as addiction that, um, like, as Raina shared, like, she really needed deliverance. Like, there's nothing she could have done to be free of those demons. There's no, there's no amount of the Bible, amount of praying and fasting that could have freed her. Because that's not how it works in the spiritual realm. As it shows in the Bible, the way that demons were cast out is that people came to the church, the Acts church, and where, where the anointing was, flowing through Apostle Paul, flowing through Apostle Peter. And Peter would walk by and his shadow would heal people and demons were cast out. And Apostle Paul, they would put handkerchiefs on him and put him on sick people, demon possessed, demons would be cast out, they'd be healed. So the Bible reveals to us how actual demonic chains, how demons are cast out out just like Raina mentioned the demons did not tremble did not manifest until she came here why they're manifesting is because it's their time to come out they know their time is up and they are exposed and it's how God moves it's like he's like I expose you and now out that is how he moves so some of you so 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 with religion religion was before Jesus came so people operate in this same old covenant way um, even demonizing the power of God, like the Pharisees were operating in spirit of religion, saying that Jesus was using power of Satan, right? So there's some of you who need real demonic chains to be broken. There's some of you who need to be set free. And that is the reason why you've been sinning. That is the reason why you have remained in addiction, because there's certain chains that are bounding you. And no matter how hard you try, they can't be broken except for the power of God. So what religion does, spirit of religion does, is it, is it makes you feel so bad for doing what you're doing, for sinning. But the truth is, for some of you, you can't help it. It's not about you're doing something wrong. It's about you need to be set free from demonic oppression because we're in a spiritual war. So I remove all of that condemnation from some, some of you. You know who you are here, and God's going to free you today. Some of you, you know who you are here, where you've tried so hard to stop the addiction. You want to. You don't want to stay in this addiction. You don't. But you can't stop. I, you're going to be free today. And I remove that lie from the enemy, the spirit of religion. I remove that lie from you now that's made you feel so much guilt and condemnation that you weren't doing enough. I remove that from you now in Jesus' name. And God says, I am not disappointed in you. I love you so much. And just as I came through the gospels and just came and just set people free out of my love, they didn't have to do anything. That's what I'm going to do for you today because it's my love for you. I don't want you to condemn yourself anymore. Never again. When I set you free, when you have revelation of my love for you, now you've accessed the power to repent. Now you've accessed the power to live by the Spirit. Number two, there's some of you here who, like how I was before, I was living lukewarm. But I was not forced, I was not in bondage. I was doing it because I wanted to. I was doing it because it seemed fun. Yeah, there's some of you here 
like that. And God is also removing the condemnation and guilt and shame from you right now. You want to know why? Because God's not, God hasn't judged you. He's not disappointed in you. He's not upset with you. You want to know why? Because the only way you can access the power to repent, the power to live by the Spirit, is by having a true encounter with God where you can see his love for you. He, does, he has not judged your past life even as a Christian. No. He, he knows what's going on. He sees you living one foot in the world, and he's not like, oh, come on, I'm waiting for you. My daughter, my son, why are you doing this? You know better. He is not that way. Spirit of religion has told you it's that way, whether it's in your mind or you've heard it from other people. You've heard preaching. It's like, come on, get your foot out of the world. You know? <laughs> But God looks at, looks at you, and he's not like that. He says, I know what they need. They just need to really meet me. That's all that's needed. I know that's going on. No, no worries. Of course. Of course they're living that way. Of course. Because you can't live for me fully until you have revelation of my love, until you encounter my power. Amen. So I remove that I remove that lie. There's some of you here who know you know you're you're lukewarm. You know you're not all in for God. I remove that guilt and shame. God's not disappointed with you. He just wants to have an encounter with you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Today you're going to be reborn. Reborn. Today you are going to become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. I see, I see an urgency in his heart right now, an urgency in his heart to let you know his love right now. I see him not wanting to wait any longer. I see, I see for so many of you, he's looked at you and he's like, I cannot wait for this day that I've appointed. And this day is now. Hallelujah. So God is calling you. Like if you've never had this kind of encounter like I've described to you, he's calling you to just come forward right now. Just come forward right now. Just right now. Right now, just come forward. You can come forward, many of you. And God is going to touch you with his power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you for your precious love, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Open up your heart to him right now. Open up your heart to him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Holding nothing back. Just surrender to him. He's going to baptize many of you in fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, God. I baptize you in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, receive his fire now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Rohan, if you can get behind. Um, as I come around, there will be someone behind you. You may feel the power of God touch you. There's someone behind you, so you can allow God to, to take you if you need. Thank you, Jesus. It's a mighty work that God does when he pushes us. So it's good to just relax and let him do his work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I baptize you in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, receive his fire now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Allow God to overtake every part of you as he touches you. Just have an encounter with Jesus. It's only you and him right now. Forget about the rest of the world. Jesus wants to take you to the heavenly realms right now where it's just you and him, where you can see him face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Receive his fire right now in Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I release the fire of the Holy Spirit to you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just worship Jesus. I know we don't have worship music, but just worship him. We don't need worship music. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. We love you, God. We surrender to you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. I baptize you in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Receive his fire. Thank you, Jesus. Receive his fire. More of him. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I declare every demonic spirit to be broken off of your life now in Jesus' name. Every demonic nightmare to leave you now in Jesus' name. Every recurring dream go from you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Every depression, anxiety, go now in Jesus' name. Be free now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I release the fire of the Holy Spirit to you now, this anointing to touch you now. More of God in your life now. More of God in your life. More revelation. Eyes open up now. All spirit of religion to lead you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I release the fire of the Holy Spirit upon you now. Receive this anointing of Jesus now to overtake every part of you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I release the fire of the Holy Spirit over you now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. I release the fire of the Holy Spirit to overtake you now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is touching people right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Baptized in the Spirit right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Receive this fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, if I didn't touch you yet, if you can just come closer here. Everyone else can stay where you are. Just come closer. Thank you, God. Yes, yeah, so you can just make like another circle right here. So everyone can fit. Yeah, keep singing, keep worshiping God. Hallelujah. your eyes upon him. He wants to reveal his love to you like never before. He loves you. I release this anointing to touch you now. In Jesus' name. I baptize you in fire. In Jesus' name. Receive his spirit in you now. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for serving. Thank you so much. You can, you can come with me, like each person. Thank you, Jesus. Come forward a little bit more. Thank you, Jesus. Don't be shy about what God wants to do. The more of God you'll receive, come a little bit closer. The more of God you'll receive, the more you open up your heart to him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I release the fire of the Holy Spirit to you now. I baptize you in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. I baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Receive this fire of the Spirit now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth to worship him. Open your mouth to worship him. I, I love you, God, with your own heart. I love you, God. Just worship him. This is how we go into the spiritual realm. More. More. More where God is. Focus on him more. Speak to him. Sing to him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I release this anointing to you in Jesus' name. Be full of his fire. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Receive his fire to fill you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Receive the fire of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, the love of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I release the fire of the Holy Spirit to you now. I baptize you in fire in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. I baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Receive his fire in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We surrender to you. Just surrender to him with your heart. Tell him with your heart. I surrender to you, God. Have your way in me. Have your way in me, God. I baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Receive his fire. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. I baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Allow his fire to overtake you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Thank you. of his love that he wants to release to you today. Come forward. Come encounter the power of Jesus. Keep praising him. Keep praising him. Thank you, Jesus. There's more of him. There's more of him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We praise you. God is touching his people. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, come here. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can we have someone behind? Yeah, Rohan. Rohan's coming. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, God is so pleased in your heart. Oh, I feel God's heart so strong for you. Your heart is rare. Your heart is rare. Your heart for his will to be done, for people to be touched, for revival. You have the heart for revival. This heart is precious to God. And, and, and the heart of God flows through you. It flows through you. Even as I minister, I, I, I stop short. I see the heart of God of revival. The heart of God for people to receive. And God is so pleased with that. He's so pleased by your obedience. He's so pleased. And he says, I'm going to use you mightily in this revival. He says, what you dreamed of, it's so much bigger. The people coming to Jesus, the soul saved. People being healed, set free, miracles happening. It's more than you've dreamed. It's more than you've prayed for. It's more than you've imagined. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's saying, you've heard me right. You followed me, and I thank you. He's thanking you now. Because so few will do this, what you've done. Thank you, Jesus. And he's lifting you now. I'm using you powerfully in this revival, so nothing can stop this. Nothing can stop this. No scheme of the enemy can stop this. And you know this today. You know my love for you. You know my heart for you. Nothing can lie to you anymore in Jesus' name. Nothing can take you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I release this anointing to you now. This anointing to be a revival carrier, a leader in this revival. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for touching me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being here. Go on. Please go on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. A man after God's own heart, God is saying about you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yes. A man after God's own heart. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, God. This is God speaking. This is God speaking. A man after God's own heart. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is this is Jesus revealing his love. Amen. Amen. This is Jesus revealing his love for him. His love for him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you are after my heart like yours, he says, many people don't get you or understand you. Because many people don't have a heart like you. A heart like David's. Thank you, God. You're set apart. Your heart is set apart. Thank you, Jesus. And God is going to lead many people to him through your heart. Oh, because you have his heart. Because you're after his heart. He's put his heart in you. A leader here. A leader here. King David was chosen because he was a leader. He was chosen because of his heart. He was chosen because he was a man after God's own heart. That's what made him a leader. Not his qualifications. Not his ability to speak. Because he was a man after God's own heart. Thank you, Father. So you are a man after God's own heart. God is confirming to you today. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And he's, he's lifting you. He's anointing you to be a leader. A leader to bring many to Jesus. To know his heart. There's so many people around you and that God will bring that are blinded in religion and don't know God's heart. And God's going to show his heart through you. You're going to be an example demonstrating the heart of the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Every spirit of religion that's attacked you, go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Out, 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 out. Thank you, God. Everyone, every spirit of religion leave in Jesus' name. Everyone, 
Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are free. You are free. You are free. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. All the chains are broken off of you. All of the chains of religion. All the chains that held you back. All the chains in your mind. They are gone now in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time for you to be who God's called you to be. Amen. It's time for you to be a light to lead many to Jesus. Amen. It's time. It's time. It's time for you to be used powerfully by God in this revival. With this heart. With this heart of God. Demonstrating the love of God through people. Receive this anointing now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. This is the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's free. Completely free. Free. Thank you, God. We praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. forever thank you jesus you here you traveled here from dallas can you come here you too you travel from dallas too come here why why i want i want you to share why you came all this way why you booked a flight here <laughs> hello um so i found Catherine's uh, video on tiktok and immediately immediately i just felt the presence of God and what you were saying, and it just drew me right away. And I was like, I need to, sorry, it just drew me right away, and I just felt pulled by what she was saying. So I basically went and followed her on every platform, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, and um, I just started watching your videos. And I've been going to church my whole life, but I just felt like your message like came alive. Like I just felt like this is the word of God. Like this is what I've been missing. And so I was watching your um, video from two weeks ago, and everyone was just being baptized by the Holy Spirit, which is something I've been yearning for for so long. And I was like, I have to come. I have to come. I have to come. And I was like, I'm going to book a flight. I'm like, should I invite my mom? Like, I was thinking who to invite, and my friend Chittera came to my heart. And I just felt like God said, you need to invite her. So I was actually at work. I'm a nurse. I work night shift, and I, I texted her, and I was just praying that she said yes to come with me. And then um, I told her about about your church and fivefold and your ministry and I sent it her way and she just she just bought along and was like she told me that the Holy Spirit told her to go she didn't even know about you yet and she's received so much from your lives like we we like hey she's coming on eight you know it's a two-hour difference in Dallas so we have to like prepare so it's just been a blessing honestly it's just it's just like open up my eyes to the truth and I'm just blessed to be here honestly Honestly, I'm so blessed to be here. Um, it was funny because the night before, I was just in my room and I was—I just told myself, God, there must be more of you, you know. Um, I've been looking for preach, you know, the, you know, your messages, all the other preaching that I listen to is is it feeds my soul, but I need like I need spirit food. <laughs> and so it just happened the next day. Um, uh, and Guzzi, she texted me like, "Would you like to go to this church?" And I just my spirit just said, "Go." And like the theme that he gave me was meeting Jesus at the well. That's just, and which is what you talked about. And so I said, you know, I have to go. And <laughs> we've been binge watching your videos. <laughs> we've been binge watching your videos, and I've received so much. I wish, I wish you could just relocate to Dallas. <laughs> I really wish, but it, it's been a blessing. And um, I just came here to meet Jesus. You know. Um, and I need direction and just in life and all that good stuff. You know, I just want to do God's work. And I just believe that me being here, 
um, I'm stepping on holy ground, and God will give me direction. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know many of you have had powerful encounters with Jesus, and I know we don't have, like, worship soaking music playing, but just turn your eyes on Jesus as I continue to minister, as God continues to move. Just keep being with Jesus. Amen. Keep worshiping him. However you want, you know, standing on your knees, clo eyes closed, however, amen. But this is your time to receive more and more and more and more and more from him and be with him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You come here. You just stand here. Um, Ro Rohan? Yeah. Thank you. You can just come whenever I call somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Revival carrier. This is a revival carrier. Jesus says, you are going to shine my light. And this revival will be not only in L.A., but in Dallas. And the heart that you had, I wish this was in Dallas. God put that heart in you. It's going to be there. And it's starting through you, through you both. It's starting through you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that you are receiving you are receiving anointing as you're watching so much. You are, you are being led to watch so much because you are receiving impartation. God is releasing to you. He is equipping you. He is putting his spirit in you. He's putting anointing in you, power of God in you. He's doing a work in you in the spiritual realm so that you can be this powerful vessel of God, revival carrier. He sees your heart to be used by him. He sees your heart to speak for him, and he's put that in there. And he's saying now, don't worry about the hows. How will this happen? How can I do this? He says, don't worry about that. What you're doing is you're being led by me right now. You're rest in that. You rest and you keep seeking me. You keep receiving from me. And I will do the rest. It's, my, it's his spirit. It's not about what we do. It's about his spirit, his power. So he says to, to rest, keep receiving. Keep receiving as you have. And let that revival fire, that fire for him, grow in you. Grow in you. And I see you just talking about Jesus with other people. I see God is bringing people. People are going to be so attracted to you. And this is for both of you right now. People are going to be very attracted to you. When you speak about God, they light up. When you sp I can literally see people's eyes being drawn to you. And ears in you being drawn to you like perking up, like God's put a special grace, like a spotlight on you so people can receive him, the real him. You're going to deliver people from religion in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I declare every lie of the enemy that's told you you weren't good enough, I declare that to go in Jesus' name. Every um, um, lie from the future, things being brought up from the future, from your past, I declare that to all go in Jesus' name, complete freedom. God says, I've forgotten everything, and the enemy can't play around anymore with your mind. You are free in your mind in Jesus' name. I declare you are free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. The devil has no power over your mind from today. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, God. I release this anointing to you to increase in you. May this revival fire grow in you, increase in you, and spread through Dallas now. Revival fire everywhere in Dallas and Texas now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. Praise him for what he's doing. Praise, we praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And now you come, you come here. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. There's a reason that, 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 that she was put on your heart because you are like uh, how David and Jonathan were pairs together. That's like you two together in the spiritual realm. And it's like God has put such similar graces on both of you. <laughs> because two is better than one because there's this power. And it's like you're both sharp irons. So iron sharpening iron together. You can be very sharp for the kingdom. And God is so pleased with your obedience to come here. He is so pleased with your obedience. He's so pleased with your heart for more of him. 
He is so pleased with that. And he is going to change your life from this day. Your life will not look the same. Your life will not be the same from this day. Things will change in your life. I see there's things in your life that you've longed there to be changed for. I see there's things in your life you've longed for them to get out. Distractions to get out. And I speak them all to be removed now in Jesus' name. I speak that you are reborn from today. You are new from today. You are a new creation. And you have a new life from today. I see even when you go back, do new things. Get rid of old things. Get rid of, as the Holy Spirit leads you, get rid of certain old things. God is taking you into this new chapter now where the past is gone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I speak peace over your mind. Peace over your mind in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I release this anointing to you, this fire to grow in you, this revival fire to grow to overflow out of you and touch everyone around you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone else who's traveled today to be here? Come. Oh, oh. Any, anyone speak Spanish? Yay. Awesome. Okay, who wants to do it? Awesome. Translate. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Buenos días. Buenas tardes. Dios los bendiga. Mi nombre es José Antonio. I'll give it to him. Okay. He says, God bless you. His name is uh, José Antonio. José Antonio. Y esta mañana me levanté. And this morning I woke up. Eh, pensando que solo Dios. Thinking that only God is the only one that gets, uh, makes him happy. I woke up like around 6 o'clock and I made my breakfast. Today is my rest day. I was uh, thinking of going to Long Beach to fish. But God brought me this afternoon here because he had a word for my life, for my heart. And that is why I'm here because God is who, who guides our lives. And the message has reached my life. And I believe that a lot of people are here, not by uh, just coincidence, but it's God's reign. It's purpose of God. And I give, God, I give thanks to God and everyone who's here. Amen. 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 Muchas gracias. Come here. Come here. Come here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. God loves you so much. Come here. Stand, stand, stand this way. Yeah. God loves you so much. He loves you so much. Oh, yeah. Can you speak for it? Thank you. Gracias. <laughs> Thank you, Father. You're changing people's lives around you. That you don't even realize. There's people, I see people who, who did not harm themselves. Even people thinking of suicide. Suicidal thoughts. But God stopped them through you because of your love that you showed them. There's certain people around you in life that go through hard times and you show them love. You're there for them when other people are not. You do kind things for them. And God has saved them through this love of you. He accepted Christ in 87. Hallelujah. And so God is saying he's so proud of you. He wants you to know how powerfully you're being used by him and you haven't even realized Because he's deepening your relationship today. With him. Because now he wants you to receive his love, his pride over you.
Because relationship with God looks like this. As you obey God, as you love on people, even if it's simple, little to you, it touches God's heart. And he's speaking to you. You got to learn now to hear him speak. This is for everybody. I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you for what you just did. I'm so proud of you for obeying me. I'm so proud of you for obeying me coming to this church today. I'm so proud of you for showing love to that person. You've touched my heart. Thank you. I love you. This is relationship with God. We have to learn to hear. He this is how you hear God. You remind yourself of this truth. Hallelujah. So God is deepening your relationship because he's revealing to you now. He's speaking to you and you haven't realized it. <laughs> he wants you to hear him saying, I love you. I'm proud of you. Every day. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. I release this anointing to you to touch you now. May this love of God increase in your heart, in your mind. May your eyes open up more now to God's love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Has anyone else traveled to be here? You? Yeah, come forward. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Keep worshiping him. Keep praising him. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hi. Where did you come from? North Carolina. North Carolina. And what brought you here? Well, my granddaughter is being baptized today at my son's church in Orange County. And I like what you're doing. I watch you online. I'm in full-time ministry, and I just wanted to come and support you because I love what you're doing. It's a blessing. God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see God. I see God using you powerfully. Um, there's many women, many women who look up to you more than you know. I see that you've changed so many, so many people's lives. Yeah, so many people are so inspired by you. And you have a strength and boldness in you and a special heart for God. Um, and people don't always express it, but they have been changed by you. They are inspired by you. They are empowered by you. And I see um, men and women and a lot, a lot of women um, walking in their calling because of you. Yeah, and I see, I see God like using you to speak so sharply to them God loves you and speak the truth like firmly like a sharp razor against the enemy's lies I see you speaking this I see you've already done this it's a gift that God's put in you and God's saying this is a gift this is a specific grace on your life you're destroying the lies of the devil that's kept people bound from religion bound in religion and so you are an equipper. You are an equipper. You are a disciple maker. And God's so proud of you. He's so proud of you. He's so proud of your hard work and your sacrifice. And standing alone sometimes. He's so proud of that. He wants you to know. Um, just to those, all of those moments. He was, his heart was touched every time. He wants you to know that and receive this like deeper revelation of his love and pride over you and the seriousness of what you're doing, the work that you're doing. You, are, you will bring revival where you are. You will bring revival where you are. God is releasing, he's breaking lies of religion now in this revival and he's, released, he's gonna be releasing things through you, special things that haven't been heard before that are from him in this revival. Hallelujah. So he's saying stand strong when you speak new things from him, like new revelations like people haven't heard before, you know, but that's from him. Stand strong. He says, I'm with you. I'm backing you up. 
and I will prove that I'm with you, God's saying. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I bless the work of God through you, and I declare this anointing to be increased in you now, in Jesus' name. The grace to set people free from religion to be released upon you now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God's called you both to be revival carriers. There's a reason why there's these coincidences that have popped up in your lives that you've seen. There's a reason why God's called you. He's called you to be, to stand out, be separated, be set apart, be different, and don't be shy about that. Amen? He's called you to stand strong in his truth. Um, there's a lot of people around you whose eyes aren't opened up, and God's began to open your eyes up in new ways today. And he's going to continue to open up your eyes more and more and more. More revelation of his love and his move. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And I declare every attack of the enemy over both of you to go in Jesus' name. I speak complete freedom over you, over your house. In Jesus' name, be free completely. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. I think there are more. Are there more people who have come that wanted to receive? Yes? Come. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Delight in the Lord. Delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. He says to you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and God's just confirming that to you. There's desires in your heart. There's desires in your heart that you've had. And you're like, will they happen? I don't know if they will happen. But God is saying, yes, they will. You want to know why? Because you're delighting in my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Yes, and so I remove all of the fear of the future and all of the worries and all of the confusion, like why isn't something happening yet? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Like, does God really hear me? I don't know what's going on. I'm confused. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I remove all of that confusion. And God is saying, my timing is so different than yours, than ours. You know, and my ways are not your ways. <laughs> and so there's this battle, like things don't make sense to us sometimes because God's ways are so different. It doesn't make sense to us in our minds, in our human minds. And we see other people in life taking off and having dreams that we want and even desires of our heart, and they don't even follow God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yes, God knows, what, God knows your heart. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. He knows your heart. He knows your thoughts. He knows, he knows what you're thinking. He's revealing this now, his love to you. And so he's saying now it's time to rest. It's time to rest. I put those desires in your heart. I'm the one that put them there. God says, I did. So don't you worry. I wouldn't put them in there if I didn't want them to happen. If I wasn't going to make them happen. I'm going to make them happen, he says. They're going to happen. They're going to happen. And his process is perfect. His timing is perfect. It is perfect. It is perfect. It is perfect. It is perfect. So God's, God wants you to enjoy this time, the waiting time, before you actually see it come to pass. Enjoy it. Rest. Remind yourself that God's ways are perfect. Remind yourself it's the goodness of God. And this is a time now that he molds your heart. It's time now where he molds that heart of humility and that heart of faith. And he gets you to that place where all you want is God's will. That's all that matters. This is the work he's doing in you now. Oh, it's a precious work he's doing. So put your mind there. Ah, oh, I thank you, God, that I'm going through what's needed to have your heart to be transformed into your image. Thank you, God. And God's going to release this peace and joy to you. And you can rest assured his promises are yes and amen. 
His promises will come to pass. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I bless you. May all of the worry, confusion, and doubt go, and may peace and joy fill you now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You, yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I speak peace to your mind. I speak all depression to go in Jesus' name. All anxiety to go in Jesus' name. All fear to go. All panic to go in Jesus' name. The thoughts in mind in the mind of like what if, I speak them all to go in Jesus' name. There are no threats on your life. Because God is with you and He's your protector. And He's your healer. He's your deliverer. God's saying that you live in the supernatural realm with me, not the physical realm. So the threats of this world doesn't touch you. And I've I'm giving you a long life, he's saying right now. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He says, I'm giving you a long life. He says, I'm crea- I've created you for a purpose on this earth. And rest assured that you will complete this purpose, that you will stay here until you complete this purpose. And I've called you to do wonders on this er- earth for me. I've called you to do many works for me. And you will have a long, prosperous life full of abundance, seeing my glory revealed. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. He loves you, and he wants you to experience his peace and joy daily. He wants you to rest in him. Thank you, Lord. And experience his love like never before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Fix your eyes upon him. He's saying, fix your eyes upon me. And you'll access this perfect peace every single moment. Every single moment. My peace is not of this world. It surpasses all understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I release this anointing to you to fill you with peace. All darkness of the mind to go. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Praise you, God. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God for what he has done today. Praise God for what he has done today. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for what you have done today. You are amazing, Lord. You are amazing, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is revival. And so there will be days who knows how long we'll go. Hallelujah. Because it's revival. We don't want to stop being in the presence of God. But for today, we have to leave now as there's another event going, as we're sharing spaces because of these COVID times. (laughs) But Jesus is amazing, and you have received all that he, all that, all that you have desired, he has released to you and more. And your lives will change from now. And every single person here, I want to speak blessing upon every single one of you here. Lift your arms, everyone here, everyone here. I speak to every sickness in every body, and I declare it to go out of every body in Jesus' name. Every sickness, every pain, I speak it to leave now in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I declare every spirit of addiction to get out of every body now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of addiction to pornography, go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. God is delivering people right now. He's setting people free right now. Every spirit of addiction out now in Jesus' name. It cannot stay in any body now. Go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Every spirit of addiction, go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Can you come here? Thank you, Jesus. God is free right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Stand right here. Yeah. Addiction, spirit of addiction, out now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Out, every one of you. Everyone go now in Jesus' name. Out, out, go, go, out. Get out, every one of you. Everyone go in Jesus' name. Out, 
Everyone, leave. Leave. Now, everyone. 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 Everyone go. Everyone go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone go. None of you can stay. None of you can stay. Go. Everyone. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, God. Everyone. Everyone go. Everyone. In the order that you came in, go now. Every single one of you. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone go. Everyone go. Thank you, Jesus. This is God setting him free right now is what's happening. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him for what he's doing. Everyone go. Everyone now. All go. Go, 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 everyone. Everyone now. Everyone. 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 Everyone go. Everyone in Jesus' name. Go. 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 Out. Out. Every single one of you. Every single one of you. Go. 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 Out. Everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, out. Every one of you must go. Everyone. Everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone go. Everyone go. 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 Everyone. Every last one. None of you can stay. None of you can stay. None of you can stay. Go. Go. Everyone. Everyone. None can remain. None can remain. None can remain. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are free. You are free. You are free. Come here. Thank you, Jesus. I release this anointing to you now in Jesus' name. Complete freedom I declare upon you now in Jesus' name. You are free. Every chain is broken in Jesus' name. And every voice of condemnation gone from you now in Jesus' name. God is delighted with you. He is, you are pure. You are the righteousness of God. You are holy. In Jesus' name, you are reborn today. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come, come here. Come here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every spirit, get out now in Jesus' name. Out. Everyone. Every spirit of addiction, go in Jesus' name. Every spirit of anxiety, out in Jesus' name. Go. Leave her. Leave her now. Everyone. Go. Leave her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Freedom is happening. Freedom is happening. Thank you, Jesus. Every spirit attacking this life must leave in Jesus' name. Everyone. Everyone attacking the mind. Everyone attacking the health. Go now. Be free. Be free. Be free now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.
You are free. You are free. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. You are amazing. You are amazing, Lord. You are amazing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you have done today. I speak, I want one, one last declaration before we leave. God's doing one more thing. Every spirit of religion upon every person, I declare it to go in Jesus' name. At, f- that's come through every person in your life. That's come through every person in your life that's brought that religion. Whether they meant, whether they came with love or hate, whatever it was. That spirit of religion that stayed in you and made you feel condemnation and guilt and shame and kept you from knowing the love of God. I remove, I remove that spirit from you now. I remove every spirit of religion out now in Jesus' name. Off of your mind now. Thank you, God. Off of your mind now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Leave everyone. Go in Jesus' name. Every spirit of religion, leave Every spirit putting her down, go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone, go. Thank you, Lord. Everyone, leave in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come here. Come closer. Thank you, Jesus. I speak to every mind here. Every mind here is made new. Every mind here is made new. No more religion. You are free. You are free. You will no longer accept condemnation voice, guilt voice, shame voice ever again. That's never God. You will only hear God saying, I love you. I'm proud of you. You'll see his arms wide open, welcoming you back even when you mess up. Your arms will be wide open. His arms will be wide open. You'll see that now. This is how you will see God. You will see him this way from now in Jesus' name. Nothing can put that veil over your face again. I declare that veil is taken off of you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I declare you are reborn today. You are reborn today. You are a new creation today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Every spirit go in Jesus' name. Everyone out in Jesus' name. Leave her. Everyone, everyone go. Everyone leave her. Leave her now. None can stay. None can stay. Leave her now in Jesus' name. Out. Out. Go. Go. Go now. Go now. Leave her now in Jesus' name. Leave her now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Out. Out. Thank you, God. Out, everyone. Everyone. Everyone go. Everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Complete freedom, I speak. Complete freedom over this woman in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Our deliverer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is the Bible come alive today? here is the Acts church. You know, when Jesus was preaching in the synagogue, when he was preaching, the Bible says a demon started yelling, ah, yelling out. So that's what we witnessed today. The Bible come alive. The Acts church is being restored to the body of Christ. Now, revival is now. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for your revival, for your wonders today. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. I want to invite you to give to this work of God.
to this work of revival. Hallelujah. We have baskets um, right there. And one is empty. You can put offering there. And another one has uh, uh, giving envelopes where you could put offering in there and also has directions on how to give online if you prefer to give online. It's just at our website, which is 5fchurch.org. Um, there's a give tab there. And also we have um, connection cards so fill that out to put your email so we can and your name so we can stay in touch with you. And also we're gonna eventually move because revival can't is gonna last longer. And you know, so we won't be here forever. We're gonna be different places as God leads. So we wanna stay in touch with you so we can let you know when there's a change, a time change or a space change. So make sure you fill out that card and you can put it right back in the offering basket. I encourage you to give to the work of God because this is how we reap the kingdom benefits. This is how we reap more from God is by sowing into his work. Amen. And when you sow where his real kingdom of God is, not a matter of talk, but of power, you'll know the kingdom of God is here when demons are cast out. When you sow where the kingdom of God is, you reap more than you've experienced where the kingdom of God was not. You'll be amazed at what you reap in your life. I'm a testimony of it. So don't miss out on giving to God and sowing into this work. And I bless every single one of you who are giving. I declare an increase of finances, a provision that you would not have lack in your life from this day. I speak doors to open, supernatural doors that only God can open, to open for you. A place where there was stagnancy in life, I declare no more. I declare you to move forward for doors to open up now in Jesus' name. I speak favor upon you. Those of you who need jobs, I speak favor to you upon your jobs, upon your applications, upon your interviews. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Also, um, st- uh, let's see. Rohan, you can help with this. Could you grab those shirts for me and just put them on, uh, share them with other, like, show them off? <laughs> So we have Revival is Now apparel, which is such an awesome way to spread the word and to start conversations. This is a prophetic word that Revival is Now. And so to say it has power, to release God's word has power. So um, it's awesome, an awesome way to spread the word, get people talking. What does your shirt mean? And you can tell them about what God's doing in the work of God. And also you'll support the work of God here um, by, by buying one of these. So we can order them online. We have different colors, different styles. Um, it's at our website, 5fchurch.org, um, the store tab. You can find it there. And the link in my bio for Instagram and TikTok. I bless everyone watching online. <laughs> everyone watching on live, I bless you. And I release this anointing to touch you where you are, this revival fire to spread where you are in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you all. We will be back here next Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Make sure you fill out the connection card so we can let you know if there's ever a time change. Follow us on social media. I go live every Tuesday and Thursday. And as as the girls from Dallas shared, you know, they've been so changed by God and blessed by the messages. And people receive miracles while they watch. So don't miss out on those lives either. You'll grow so much and then receive more power of God as you watch. Tuesdays and Thursdays around 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, we'll be back here next Sunday. Follow us on social media so you can stay updated too in case there's ever time changes. And also follow us on YouTube because we uh, there's many messages there that will bless you as well. So have an amazing rest of your day. Rejoice in the Lord. He is amazing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Hallelujah. And we'll see you next Sunday. Can't wait to see you next Sunday. Can't wait for what God will do. Invite your friends. They're all in need of the anointing and fire of God. Hallelujah. Invite your friends. God bless you. Every chain broken. Everyone. 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 Get out. Get out. Everyone, go. Everyone, go. Everyone, 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 go, go, go. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. Everyone, 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 go, go. Get out of him. Get out. Out. In the 